meant anything goes. Anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could fall in love, anyone could die, anyone could die. Agent Parkless. Concept was so cool. Agent Parkless. Concept was so cool. People couldn't believe it. Had to believe it. People couldn't believe it. That mm, they had to believe it. Ooh. Everything that you hit on the down level. Happening. Everything that you hit on the down level. Happening. Everything that you hit on the down level. And I'm Gary Butterfield. And this is Days of Future Cast, the podcast where Gary and I are covering all things Age of Apocalypse. We're in the we're in the thick of it, Gary. Things are happening. There's mm-hmm. people are going on missions. They have a lot more teeth than usual. Things are crazy in this universe. This uh this session we're getting to our first number two. You know, mm-hmm. so we're we're gonna get these stories are not just set up. Yeah. For the first time. Uh, but not uh, today. You just do a <laughs> you. Like just a little little spoiler. It's just a fi- a fight. So it's not that much uh, advancement, <laughs> but uh, yeah. And uh, we're getting into the replacement they had for uh, Excalibur, the team with like Nightcrawler and Megan and Captain Britain, Shadowcat, yeah, and such. And um, um, yeah. so we, this is our our cover here is uh, Nightcrawler, um, j- just beating the shit out of Angel, which I am here for, uh, while some Sentinels are flying around in the background, which is kind of a summation of everything we're going to get inside this comic book too. I, I love the uh, sentinels on the stained glass window because I like they're not in the same style, but I like the idea of a, a stained glass window with just a sentinel on it. That'd be extremely dope. Like, I would, dude, if I just had like notch money, <laughs> like, <laughs> here's my worship, and you know, I just show people around your house, like you go on a date and you have a stained glass window of a sentinel. It's like this is so fucking cool, but I have a lot of questions. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like who did you ask? Where did yeah, you go like, to get this? <laughs> yeah, this is pretty great. Um, yeah. And this is, uh, weirdly enough. So this is Warren Ellis. Yeah. Uh, who is a real comic book writer. <laughs> he's a um, real guy. <laughs> you know, he, it's funny. We unlike some of the other people, you know, he's, he's, he's a person. Uh, it's always easy to forget that Warren Ellis got his start, like doing nineties Marvel stuff. Um, this is not, you know, planetary, right? Like we're not getting like the absolute good shit, but I do think he knows how to make a comic, like not super embarrassing. Mm-hmm even at this stage. So I generally like this. Um, it's real weird. Age of Apocalypse was, uh, I think this might be the start for Warren Ellis. It might not be. He might've been writing Excalibur at this point, but um, also the start for Brian K. Vaughn. Um, there's some comics that he did that are tie-ins. Oh, interesting. Um, I, d- I yeah. did not know that. Yeah. That was the, no. uh, like when I saw Warren Ellis' name on this, I was like, Ooh. And then I like, as I was reading, I was like, Oh, this is like basic ass Warren Ellis. Like this is not him inventing whole new worlds, new cloth or anything. This is him writing an age of apocalypse. Like he was given an assignment, like a, like a writer. Yeah. Is. <laughs> 10 years before, like this was, he was probably in his mid twenties, mm-hmm. mid or early twenties, you know, like, uh, this is, you know, it's not strong Warren Ellis work, but I forgive it because like, you know, what the fuck? He was super young. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's interesting. So I think one of the things we talked about in this uh, so far is that Nightcrawler has had some real weird inconsistent characterization mm-hmm. through it. I think that this issue, you know, Nightcrawler is the the star of this comic. Like this, I think is the age of apocalypse version of Nightcrawler. Yeah. You know, whether that's, that's good or bad. I think that like his starring issue and him kind of being a lot more ruthless, like still kind of like having a smirk, but being a little bit more ruthless. I think this is probably, the intended age of apocalypse nightcrawler. Yes. Agreed. Um, yeah. and that just has not come through. Like he hasn't really been getting enough time in the other issues that we've seen him in to do, yeah. to do any of this. Um, and we're not going to start out with nightcrawler. We're going to start out with a character called switchback. Um, who mm-hmm. is basically tr- entrusting herself to get, to go to a place called, um, I've already forgotten it. What is the name of the place that she's going to? Avalon. Thank you. Um, And the reason it's kind of a leap of faith is because nobody knows if people actually make it. Once you get there, you can't communicate with people and you have to give up all of your belongings to go. So um, there's a lot of like trusting kind of questions around this comic book. Yeah. It's essentially like a, uh, a dark exploitive version of the underground railroad. Yes. You know, is the idea here. Now I'm not saying that to make light of the real underground railroad. I think that's an explicit 
connection here. Like uh, in this, you can get a broker uh, and they'll take you out of Apocalypse America yeah, for this. Yeah. This is much more um, akin to yeah. like coyotes that you, that you read about, like yeah. getting immigrants yeah, yeah, from yeah. Mexico to the U.S. It's weird too, because uh, Avalon is the savage land. Yes. Like she's going through um, Antarctica, uh, the caves of Antarctica <laughs> here in the beginning, um, the famous caves. Uh, and, uh, yeah, it's, it's freezing. There's this continuous, you know, and that's just one of those things. Like, again, this is not great Warren Ellis, but the fact that he's constantly bringing in like other sentences other than just sight. Yes. You know, that's like real, that's writing, you know, one oh one stuff, but he's doing it, you know, like you constantly get the sense that it's very cold here because the characters actually talk about it in a way that you would mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, like, this, you know, kind of shows potential. These maybe slightly above average, you know? And, uh, uh she, so she's riding a boat through these <laughs> Antarctica caves. Uh, the person drops her off. She walks ahead and she encounters Kane, AKA juggernaut, who is a monk, yep. um, who does not have the juggernaut helmet, but is still fucking ripped dude. Like if you saw this dude in real life, you'd run, you'd leave. <laughs> yes. Yeah, something is wrong. <laughs> like I need an adult. I gotta go. Um, yeah, he's, uh, he's chained together. Like he's got his hands chained together, like on his belt. Uh, the amount of ripness is, for being a non mutant is just absolutely ridiculous. Like, but also like, I don't know why he doesn't have the crimson gem of side Like, I don't think Xavier is the one who pressured him to go to the Korean war. Um, well maybe he you know. does. And that's the little necklace that he's wearing. He just made it into a necklace. Oh, I, yeah, that could be, he just wear does that instead of the, uh, the helmet. Sure. Um, I, lo- I love that. I love a necklace crimson gem of side <laughs> <laughs> it's very it's very diablo right like oh this is a plus three charisma gen of side track <laughs> okay yeah. i can equip it in my accessory slot now i don't have to use up my helmet slot excellent good, 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 good. um so uh you know he's he's guiding him to uh to aval guiding her to avalon mm-hmm. um they show them continue through the uh, forest of antarctica uh it's still very cold um, there's a part here that's explicitly wrong where it's like, these are the last words the monk will say. And then we cut over to another panel where he talks again. <laughs> so, so um, and, uh, he asks how it is. Uh, she's like, Oh, you know, it's really cold. This is horrible. You know, that this fire is not adequate. Uh, you're this insane religious freak on steroids. Uh, and he goes, no, no, I mean the outside world. Like how is it outside of Avalon? And she's like, it's way worse. Yes. You know? Uh, since then at some point during this journey, um, Kane starts babbling about a brother, um, that, that, that yep. is dead now dead. Um, so he's still hung up on Xavier just like everybody else is. And we encounter Avalon, AKA the savage land, AKA what is art? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot. It's a, uh, it's it's a uh, skybox and a doom two level is what this is. I mean, like, what do we <laughs> It's like drawn in crayon. It looks like Yoshi art or something like sure. that a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, you know? I'll go there with you. Yeah. Like it's just really because it had like the foreground is all like normally penciled and inked and everything, but the background is this weird, weird, like skyward sword palette thing. Like they went almost wanted to look at like a painting, but it doesn't quite work just like Skyler skyward sword. Didn't so. Yeah. 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 It's, it's very bizarre. Um, and then we get our, our reveal of the, uh, the title here. This uh, issue is called the infernal gallop, which is this version's world of the kind of the underground railroad or a coyote thing, which is a reference to, uh, a piece of classical music cool. or if it's in the underworld. So they're drawing real, like, Oh, it's, you know, moving through the underworld Sharon kind of connections here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and we, we cut over to uh, a bunch of Sentinels, uh, kind of weird model Sentinels. Yeah. Flying around uh, New York. What's up with these dudes like chins? They have like little lights on the end of them. What's going on with that? What do you do with your chin lights, <laughs> sir? <laughs> yeah, it's the illuminate soup. Uh, they look like they're playing laser tag to me. Yes. Like centurions playing laser tag. Yeah. Yeah. You just uh, need little mohawks. They can probably get those aftermarket. So, <clears throat> um, Ken Lashley is our artist is somebody else who I also did not know, but it is fine. Like the art is fine in general in the age of apocalypse. Yeah. Yes. Sign up for nineties, get nineties. You know, um, we get, we have some narration here with this is New York, uh, but this is not America. It squats where America used to be, which is I feel like like something Warren Ellis would say. Like if he could cuss, like he'd yeah. be like, it's it's shitting in the rubble of America and vomiting all yeah. over the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> it says it's pleasuring or what does it say? Abusing itself, abusing itself. Yeah, yeah. So you know, the idea of this is you know not America, but it's this like creature squatting in its corpse and jerking off is pretty Lovecrafty. Yeah. 
Um, we go over to Heaven, which is Warden Worthington's like nightclub where humans and mutants can hang out at the same time. Um, and we talk, we get a lot of narration about his sacrifices, like the things that he's had to do to keep this place going. Like where everybody basically hates him, and he's has no soul left because he's been, you know, mm. hiding, holding a sliver of heaven in the guts of hell. And then, um, yeah. as he's going into his bedroom, just probably just to chill, just to have a good time, right? Like just to be like, oh god, I gotta get away from this fucking nightclub for twenty seconds. Off half face mask <laughs> this, no, this <laughs> face mask smells a mask, a regular mask. <laughs> how does remy do this this is nasty take all the spirit gum from under the uh the sides of it but uh, night night yeah <clears throat> yeah yep um and this is uh this version of nightcrawler and who is a badass um you know who is uh, a tough guy uh has some more ellis protagonist traits uh and that he's kind of sarcastic has like a, a quip you know ready mm-hmm. for for every every challenge and uh you know basically like uh angel calls him nightcrawler he's like hey don't uh don't yell out my code name have my travel arrangements been made uh nightcrawler you're a blue guy with two swords on your back and a giant mutant uniform everybody knows who you are <laughs> like i could i could call you gary butterfield and, and people would look at me and be like that ain't gary butterfield <laughs> what are you talking about <laughs> no, I don't know. You figure, I, like so darkholm is a guy with blue fur who stands up who's got swords and the nightcrawl oh, oh. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe he should put yeah. on some eyeglasses to go and do clark kent style you know what i'm saying <laughs> just they'll never yeah. recognize you with eyeglasses on kurt <laughs> he's just an image inducer like everyone else has a weird tech belt kind of thing um i love uh he can turn invisible in shadows which is one of those weird nightcrawler powers that he sometimes has and sometimes doesn't mm-hmm. um that's canonical but it's not always canonical yeah um and uh angel's about to turn on the lights and <laughs> nightcrawler smashes his light switch um and again it's just like really giving angel a hard time like you're gonna become whatever i tell you to become you know you exist solely upon the excellence of your groveling to apocalypse and your worth to us like you decided to live in this liminal space and these are the consequences yes you know um and and he just straight up asked asked us like wait a minute like you you need to go to antarctica to find your mom like why and and kurt's just like hey i need to find i need to find this woman we need to corroborate a story this woman is in Avalon, which means I have to go to Avalon. And he's like, you know, I don't, I'm not going to really do that. And then like, <laughs> and like Crawler just punches him in the face and it's like, I don't have time for this. Let's go. <laughs> Specifically, he punches him in the face when angel calls her a mystique out for, uh, steal, you know, stealing everything they own and dumping them to die, like freeze in the ocean. Yeah. You know, like, uh, making a living off of people who are helpless, like accuses, like that's basically what this arc is about. You know, this, this comic is Nightcrawler realizing his mom is profiteering off of this horrible situation yeah. and having a hard time. Anyone who brings it up gets punched or worse, yeah. you know, is what we'll find out. And having been punched, Warren gives up the details, go to a warehouse. Um, it's called Stark Holdings, ask for Proud Star, And yeah, um, you can, yeah. you can find your way. Um, really interesting that they brought in Stark Holdings out of nowhere. Like what's Tony Stark yeah. up to if Xavier is dead ever? No, nobody was asking at this time. Oh, we're we're going to find out in X universe one and two. Oh, good. Yeah. I didn't remember yeah. that at all. <laughs> that comes later. Um, cut over to, uh, to Magneto who is on a, uh, he just got pictures of Xavier up on most of his screens. That's his zoom background. It's just like tons of Xavier's while he's talking to mystique on a, on a vid phone. Yes. Uh, and he's still rocking those braids, which I can appreciate. Uh, but mystique is basically saying, no, like I'm not going to go to Avalon. Like I'm not gonna let you find destiny. And Magneto's like, you don't understand. I'm a telling you, you are, because if you don't, I'm going to tell Apocalypse all about you, and he's going to come off and come over and rip off your arms and legs. Uh, in the background, Mystique has traded the uh, skull belt for a skull headband, and I think that's an upgrade. We haven't seen her a whole design yet, but that's an upgrade, right? Yeah, yeah, I like it. The uh, pretty cool and longer hair. Yeah, you know, hair grow. Uh, he basically, you know, he's, like, he's threatening her, like if Apocalypse will kill you or I will kill you. Um, you have to do this because you're the only person who knows. Uh, destiny and it's kind of interesting the idea that mystique will not go there because all these people she sent you know sold a a bill of goods like took all of their stuff for one it's like when batman ends up in prison you know and everybody's like ready for revenge like these people are not gonna be big fans of mystique you know they lost loved ones they lost everything they had she probably did not tell them what it would entail yeah you know 
So you, you tell me we're going to Antarctica. I didn't pack any bathing suits, and then we show up in the Savage Land where I definitely need a bathing suit at all times. Yeah. A real <laughs> shit bag thing yeah. to do, Mystique. I had to turn my shorts into jorts. You know, <laughs> <laughs> just the uh, um. So yeah, I meant to say pants into shorts. Uh, yeah, shorts into shorts is like some weird alchemy shit. That's good, dude. Like, that's like that's <laughs> thing hot in the scene. <laughs> Power. Well, it's not breakfast. Power. Shorts. <laughs> <laughs> um so uh we go over to my uh nightcrawler uh going into this warehouse he teleports in and there are several uh you know indigenous people uh doing a ghost dance um, yes. the ghost dance was a real thing uh that happened uh that it was a kind of a ritual to get rid of the the white man uh from the united states it's a big part of shatter on lore uh in shatter on they do it again and it kind of works okay. um magic comes back it's uh it's pretty cool and uh, that's what they're doing. It's a, there's this great, uh, I love this teenage edge Lord uh, nightcrawler where he's like, what is this place? It's a church. And he's like, I shall kill Worthington when I return. He knows what I think of churches. Uh, <laughs> it's very funny. <laughs> like, like the idea that me, you're going on a mission to save the universe and are like, but I can't go to churches. Like what? <laughs> yeah. Fucking vampire. Like what, what, why? Like not this kind of building. It doesn't matter what kind of religion it is. I can't be in the same room. Yeah. As I, we, uh, all of this ghost dance stuff is explained by John Proudstar, um, whose costume mm-hmm. design is tiny shirt, big body, some scars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> tight pants. Yeah. yeah. Well, like extremely if, tight pants, no dick. If this dude had some more ruffles, I feel like he'd be a Jojo. Like, I don't know what they call Jojos. I don't know what those are, but like they, he would just be like what I would see in a Jojo gif if someone posted one of those. Yeah, he's a real fist of the North Star vibes. Yeah, you know, tiny feet. No, yeah. I just noticed that before. He's got he's got real weird little feet. Got size sixes, man. But you know, he's still got that OnlyFans <laughs> account. You know what I'm saying? He's rocking it. He's living yeah. it. <laughs> in step. Sounds like a ladies when he's coming in the room. Um, so he's talking about uh, the ghost dance, doing this, uh, you know, exposition. And this is Warren Ellis having a thing about history. He thinks is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Uh, they mention he, this uh, proud star also calls him out about his mom. Like, you know, we're all working on the infernal gallop. We know that your mother strips everything of worth before the transfers before doing your job. Um, you know, uh, she's like, you know, my mother does her job. What more do you want? And he says, you know, honesty and decency. This is a holy chore. And Nightcrawler grabs his finger and teleports it off. <laughs> uh, ripping it off. Uh, this is like Nightcrawler from the uh, uh, Phoenix movie. Yeah. Where he- a demon grin and like break somebody's neck with his tail. Fucking a dude. This is great. So, this one. Yeah. You know, and it's not a great reason, but the, I mean, a reason to be a dark night crawler. Yes. You know, because of age of apocalypse reasons. And, um, and he says like, you know, my mom is doing a good thing. Um, she, she's helping you people. Why shouldn't she take a little off the top? Like it's, you know, but you know, number one, it's none of your business anyway. And like, where, where would you, any of you be if she wasn't there helping you? And now let's yeah. like shut all this down and let you need to get me out of here unnoticed. And in the background, listening to all this is a character that I very much thought was going to be Psylocke. Um, yeah, but but it turns out to be not be Psylocke. <laughs> so I was it's surprised. It's Penny Moonstar dressed up as Psylocke, basically. Yeah. Yes. Um, you know, and uh, she's heading back to Apocalypse here. She's a, a double agent. Mm-hmm. Um, she kills one of the guards for no reason. Love it. And you know, Apocalypse is just like, stop killing guards. Uh, which I love. Uh, she goes into apocalypse where he is uh, around uh, Deadpool, Wade Wilson, who is regressing. Uh, what they do with Wade Wilson, this is real weird. He's just staying there saying X over and over and he doesn't wear armor or anything. He's just all scarred and gross. Yeah. Uh, and he's also standing next to like a, I guess there's a more human bone furniture oh, that apocalypse has put together. Like, like a futon, a bone futon or something. Yeah. He's going to start playing the bone marimbas. Exactly. Uh, that's how you tell skeletons are coming. So he's going to start doing that. Unfortunately for everybody, a bone karimba just sounds like a steel drum. So it's just going to be all Caribbean yeah. stuff all the time yeah. down there. Like we, we haven't talked too much about the soundtrack of the age of apocalypse, but I imagine it's more steel drum. <laughs> it's all steel drum, dude. <laughs> Really if you at if you at me on Twitter, uh, I can send you Autumn Steel Drum playlist on Spotify, which are all songs that only that that feature a steel drum sample, and that you can play it while you listen to Apocalypse. I promise that is a re- yeah. that is a real thing, and I will I will send it to you if you at me on Twitter and leave us a review. I guess like do that too. <laughs> I did do a little bit more. Yeah. Um. So uh, you know, he says that you know, stop killing guards. 
um, you know, at this point they're more valuable than you are. And she's like, no, I have developments uh, at the ghost dance. Like she was a plant in the, this indigenous uh, ritual. Yes. Um, you know, says what's wrong with dead man, Wade, who is a uh, Deadpool in this. And he's regressing to his days uh, before the eugenics program, you know? Um, so he's just kind of like catatonic and just uh, in tons of pain. And like um, has not developed his coping mechanisms. Why is it like, why does apocalypse have <laughs> this guy in his room, man? Like, it seems like I get that he's like feeds off of human misery or whatever, but th- this is arguably a mutant that is just, I think he's probably shitting all over the floor and like dripping skin. Yeah. Like, why do you have this dude? This is unusually casual for apocalypse. Yeah. Even in terms of his voice, like just like, that's cold. Danielle. <laughs> <laughs> like saying apocalypse would say like you know, we're often not get the apocalypse memo <laughs> you know? just imagine apocalypse's twitter account of being like Mm-mm, that ain't it kid <laughs> <laughs> yeah sorry <for> you. <laughs> mask off and speaking of mask off damask is off to go hunt down nightcrawler yes like, um he says uh you know Talks about like, hey, Damask, uh, prepare these two for your pale riders to go on a sea trip. Uh, Cause you know, Danielle tells, says what uh, Nightcrawler's up to. Yeah. Uh, we go back over to Nightcrawler who was in Excalibur submarine, um, yep. th- which is noted to be, uh, they have stealth machinery, stealth machinery that's groaning and grinding. And I'm like, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> yeah, that's not, that's not healthy. <laughs> it's not a good uh, th- place to be. <laughs> Yep. Failed your sneak check. Um, we then cut over to uh, Avalon where destiny is there. And th- this is a pretty abrupt ending here. Uh, you know, destiny meets switchback, uh, you know, and uh, then she just uh, her, as she touches switchback, she explodes in psychic uh, lightning out of her eyes and says the burning gods help me. All I can see is apocalypse. Yep. So uh, she's seeing the future. Uh, you know, which is destiny's power touching swim switchback somehow does it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's our cutoff thing. So we have people hunting nightcrawler nightcrawler on his way to Avalon to get his mom. And, uh, destiny knows about it. Yes. A lot of setup, um, a lot of introduction, which is what a lot of these number ones are, which is, uh, fine. Like it's still, it's still kind of working for me. Um, we talked yeah. a little bit about Warren Ellis. Like, I feel like this is very workman like, which is a good thing. Like this is all reading fine. I'm understanding everything that's happening on the page. Like this is all like, it still feels like we're in the very much early days before crazy shit is about to pop off. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm curious because it's been so long since I've read this. I'm curious if the later stuff plays with any of his like pet ideas. Mm hmm. Because you know, like Warren Ellis has some tropes yeah. uh, that pop up a lot, and I'll I'll be real curious if that pops up here. Um, yeah, and uh, but yeah, decent issue. Like this is a pretty fun week. Like all the stuff I read, I enjoyed. Yeah, me too. Uh, this whole thing is going down surprisingly smooth. You know, it it is junk food, but it's going down real fast. Yeah, yeah. I was. So. It's you know, it's a can of Pringles. Like I have not stopped since I opened up my first can of Pringles at twelve years old. Can't stop popping. Yeah, <laughs> never ending Pringles. Uh, like a long cat kind of thing, but a Pringle can. Yes. Um, it, thank uh, you everybody for listening. We really appreciate it. If you want to support the show directly, the best place to do that is at patreon.com slash duck TV. A couple of bucks a month gets you uh, access to these episodes early. If you want them all in one big lump sum every two weeks, you can also get on the Slack and chat with us about this. Uh, you get tons and tons of exclusive com- content that Gary and Cole have done all kinds of cruel stuff on the network. Uh, please go check that out. If you can't, you can uh, tell your friends about the show or leave reviews. That really, really helps. You can at Plumber Duck for any anything. Just let him know what's going on. Um, he really appreciates any kind of communication on, on Twitter. So we, we would really appreciate it if you did that. And um, yeah, I think that's about it, Gary. Yeah, hey, I think that's about it. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.